a playlist original. Welcome to the Pilot Podcast, where we review the pilot episodes of TV shows to answer your question, should I watch this? My name is Mitu. And my name is BJ. And this week, we're watching Dinner with the Parents on Prime Video slash Freebie. So stay tuned to find out how often Me Too has dinner with her parents. Ooh, okay, that's a good question. Until then, I can tell you what happened on this show. Please. Buttoned up David, played by Henry Hall, and eccentric brother Greg, played by Daniel Thrasher, have dinner with their parents, Harvey, played by Dan Backdahl, and Jane, played by Michaela Watkins, and their grandma, played by Carol Kane, every Friday, somehow managing to cause maximum chaos each week. Chaos is a perfect description for this sitcom based on family dinners. What did you think of some of the dynamics in the Langer family? Mess. Everything was messy. (laughs) It was a mess. And at some points, they made physical messes with buffalo wings and effects thereof. And sometimes they were just metaphorical messes, but it was very messy. And my favorite mess is between Jane and her mom because Michaela Watkins is just a treat to watch on screen. And Carol Kane is of course a legend and watching the dynamic of Nana essentially very openly preferring Jane's sister to her whom we haven't met yet. And I think that's going to be really fun when we do meet her because she'll obviously come to one of these dinners. That's going to be very funny. They have great chemistry and they're, toxic mother-daughter relationship had a lot of backstory that I feel like they really cleanly and neatly fed to us about preferring the sister and wanting to give the family heirloom ring to the sister's son if that ever happens. (laughs) And you really see the tension and all that Jane has done to take care of her mom and a little bit of payback in this episode as well. (laughs) I really appreciated how they built that relationship. You appreciated how they built that relationship, but Jane needs Nana to appreciate her. And specifically, I laughed so hard when she talked about this like memory foam thing that she got for Nana that went unacknowledged. And then the payback, which I don't want to give away and spoil, I had to pause the TV. I was cracking up. Carol Kane played that so well. There's a physical payback. And I got a little worried, but I was also like... (laughs) She kind of deserves it. She needed to acknowledge Jane. I also really liked Harvey, the husband. He was just very silly. I even liked how much of a story they told with David walking into the house and Jane's shirt saying, did I say that out loud? And then Harvey's shirt just being his own face several times over, over a floral print. I kind of wanted it. Like I kind of wanted that shirt. I like the shirt, and I like that Harvey didn't see it as a gag gift and just appreciated that his sons got that for him. It was very sweet. It was a fire shirt. It was. He rocked it, and I like that he's the, well, more stereotypical dad. He wants to tell dad jokes and just be the funny man that everyone likes. It worked really well in this context, especially because... In this episode, David is introducing the family to his girlfriend, quote unquote, Kristen. (laughs) And Harvey's goal is to make her laugh. And what he goes through to do that was very funny. He wanted to make her laugh within the first 20 minutes. And the sweat on his brow when he looks down at his phone and he realizes like seven minutes in that he still has not made her laugh made me laugh so he was successful in making some lady laugh somewhere it just wasn't the one that he wanted and it was interesting to see them be so silly because i know harvey the actor dan bachdahl from veep and i know michaela watkins from casual most recently for both of them and those are like darker comedies so i was surprised to see them in something so light but they played it really well how do you think David and Greg were played as the siblings with the rivalry. I'm going to give our listeners a peek behind the curtain. You and I talked about this a little bit. I like David individually. I like Greg individually. I don't know that I care yet about the beef between them, but I think that the potential for both of their characters is so great. So I look forward to continuing to watch them. 
Like, do I care that they have this rivalry and David calls Greg a whoopsie? Yes, I actually thought that was very funny. (laughs) But I don't necessarily care about how jealous they are of each other. What I did care about was the love between them and then how David has space to grow. Obviously, he needs to, like, build some confidence. He's kind of like the lion in the whiz. And then Mm -hmm. with Greg, we obviously need to see him grow up. I agree. The rivalry didn't really work for me in this first episode. I do like that light spoiler by the end. We find out they do care about each other. So there is brotherly love there. David, on his own, great lead character. He helps make all the scenes awkward and stressful and funny, which is an uncomfortable combination (laughs) that works for this show. (laughs) But I do need him to question his relationship with his family because they are tearing him down sometimes they're tearing him apart lisa like it's tough (laughs) that's he really loves his family if he's doing this every friday the other thing that heightens the tension is the fact that they're in this tiny house they are in one house we are not really veering far from the living room let alone to other bedrooms so it keeps the storytelling extremely tight which heightens how stressed you are. You feel like you're in this living room with them and all of these little secrets and games and pranks are going to get found out. Yes, and that's something I hadn't considered until you mentioned it when we were discussing because they can't get away from each other. So there is always that pressure of like, they're always watching, they're always judging David, there's always someone trying to figure something out. And really, the only one who gets a little bit of a break is Nana, and that doesn't actually work out that well for her. No, it's not a good break. (laughs) It's not a good one. I also really loved their neighbor, Donnie, played by John Glazer. Specifically, the way he pronounces the word pizza, which I won't spoil, was a joy. He brings some tension because he adds to some of the hijinks in this episode, But I thought he broke up the tension in the house very well. So you just chose one cringe for another. It was like a little mini break. Yes. With such a family-focused show, it's good to have someone outside the family, in this case, a somewhat friendly neighbor who feels very comfortable and has history with everyone that can just play off of everyone and also make some people laugh. And I think based on the preview that they have at the end of the first episode, we're going to keep seeing people coming in and out of the house for Friday dinners. Yes, you gotta have a dinner guest of the week, I guess. And I think it's gonna feel extra special if we ever leave the house. Like, if and when they do a different shot or we follow David to his house or maybe we see Greg Festival, you know, should that get off the ground, <laughs> our own little fire fest, then I think that'll feel extra special, like a field trip. Ooh, and Greg mentioned that the parents have quite a bit of money. So will they ever just go out to dinner? Ooh, like just leave those kids behind and do Friday night dinner on their own. Oh, no, I meant take the family out. Oh, (laughs) so everybody (laughs) does stay together. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and they're paying the bill for everyone. (laughs) (laughs) We might see that. I also look forward to Greg Nana hijinks. I don't know how to explain it, but the way that she co-signed his music festival idea, I was like, I cannot wait to see them do very silly, borderline illegal things together. It's because Nana, I feel like, takes advantage of being the oldest in the house and is like, I'm going to say what I want. I have favorites between my children and my grandchildren, and I'm going to support that favorite forever and always. And she tends to like the not stable one. Well, Nana doesn't seem You're quite right. Stable. You know what? <laughs> I think as we peel back the layers of this bloom and onion and get to the dip in the middle, we're getting to some truth. Yeah, she's supporting herself in every version of it. <laughs> You're right. Good for her. I can't fault that. I really love her. So we know your favorite character. Is it Nana for sure? Yes, it's definitely Nana. Who are you feeling? I like David. I'm rooting for him. He's a great lead. And I want him to take a break from his family. I'm just waiting for him to come to that realization. That I'm looking forward to, too. Not necessarily the break from his family, but at least an understanding of why he is showing up every week. 
and this is just from one pilot episode and my little bit of knowledge, I doubt he's going to therapy. Yeah, I don't think he's on Talkspace.com or anything like that. That's for sure. Not sponsored. (laughs) No, not by one of those. No. (laughs) However, despite me thinking he needs to evaluate his relationships, this show does have a lot of heart. You do see the family love. They have a very sweet close of sitcom moment that is then interrupted by a gross out humor sitcom moment. But in the very sweet moment, you do get a hint of how much they care about each other. I do look forward to understanding more about it because then it'll help me understand why David is showing up each week. But I do just want to come back to something you said about our lead and how much lifting he's doing of bringing humor and cringe and helping to bring along some character development. It's not easy to balance these things. There's layers and layers of discomfort here. And I think he's doing it very well. And I'm laughing a lot. Everyone plays off each other really well. And I feel like all the characters are believable. Sometimes sitcom characters don't land for me. Yeah. But I buy this family completely. I get what's happening here. So now that you get it, will you watch more episodes of Dinner with the Parents? Yes. If you are looking for a ridiculous family sitcom that is like a little bit grown up, like 13 plus, I think. So I think sometimes someone (laughs) curses sometimes. Then this is for you. It certainly is for me. I think it's very funny. So I will watch again seriously. I have to agree. This is a rare would watch again seriously sitcom. It was funny. It made me uncomfortable. And I want to keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks. I hated it. Like, that's kind of how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> I hate this. I hate this. And I'm going to keep watching. Yes. <laughs> okay, me too. The listeners need to know how often do you have dinner with your parents wow totally forgot the question thank you for reminding me we do not live in the same state so instead of every friday i would say like every couple months i try to go home every couple months so that often i bet your mom would want more often but you know it's up to you sure she'd have a different opinion and i'm like yeah we're fine everything's fine she's like no if only we could all live in the same room Uh, they would love that tight environment (laughs) yeah they'd want to be on this set my parents well you can always find us every week and you know if you want to choose fridays to listen to us head to thepilotpodcast.com And you can follow us on all of your favorite podcast platforms. You can also follow us on social media at The Pilot Pod on Instagram, X, and TikTok. And you can send thoughts, feelings, show recommendations, because every other week we do a show recommended by you, our wonderful listeners, to askthepilotpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Bye.